Hello, I'm Wayne Visser and I'm Director of CSI International and I'm here today in Chicago with Peter Nicholson, who's Executive Director for Foresight Design Initiative here in Chicago. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Uh, do you want to start by giving us your perspective on what you think Chicago is doing well in the area of sustainability? I think the, it's a great question. I, I think the main thing as I think about Chicago and all the different issues that are happening here is, is one thing doesn't stand out to me. I think what's made Chicago unique is really the integrated approach they've started to take around sustainability. Uh, as I've sort of reflected on this question, I've, I've, I've realized it's, it's, you could look at green roofs, you could look at car sharing, you could look at the Chicago Climate Exchange, you could look at bicycling in Chicago, you could look at uh, uh, ener renewable energy, um, land use, brownfields development, uh, uh, transportation, you can look at a lot of different things, but to me one of the most significant things that's happened here is how we have sort of broken down the barriers between departments, city departments in particular, uh, and they're working together in a way they, they haven't been before around these issues. Mm. Well, let's take a few of those, if we talk first about the green roofs, yeah. because I think that uh, isn't uh, so common in, in many cities. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, Mayor Daly visited Germany and, and, and saw a bunch of green roofs, you know, grass growing on roofs and asked, you know, why is this going on? They explained the benefits to them in terms of, you know, heat island effect, in terms of rainwater abatement, in terms of insulation of buildings and thought it was a great thing. Came back, put a 30,000 square foot green roof on City Hall. I believe it was the first municipal green roof. Uh, it's more of a green garden, really, if you, once you see it. Um, but realized the benefits of it and sort of lashed onto it and really pushed it through across the city. And now we have green roofs, I think, basically in every part of the city in one way. Some are very small and some are much larger. Okay. Now, one of the things I knew about Chicago was uh, its role with the climate exchange, yeah. particularly around uh, the trading of NOx and SOx, mm -hmm. um, and now more recently with the climate exchange. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so Richard Sandor, who established this, this you know, market-based solution to, 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 rain, to rain, uh, acid rain gases with the SOx and NOx exchange, uh, and managed to reduce that significantly into the point where acid rain, I don't believe is really that much of an issue before, said, what if we applied the same thing to carbon? What if we came up with a market in which carbon was traded and we use this market to reduce the, 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 the overall carbon output or carbon equivalent output in the case of greenhouse gases? And created what we call now the CCX, the Chicago Climate Exchange. And it became sort of a national center for this kind of activity. And the future of it's kind of interesting. We don't know. It really, it's, it's really waiting on federal policy before we'll know what will happen with it. But it has really established Chicago at the, sort of the forefront of this, you know, way before it was on anyone's radar, way before Inconvenient Truth, Chicago had this thing going on and it was pretty exciting and still is. Mm. Now one of the things you were telling me about earlier was the, the price that uh, carbon is trading at on that exchange and how, how different that is to Europe and also about some of your trips comparing Chicago to Amsterdam or to other cities. So can you just reflect on some of the differences you've noticed? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the, the climate exchange, it, it, there's been a factor of 10, I think, as I've noticed it, basically between the price of carbon here on a voluntary market and on the mandatory market uh, in, the, in the EU. I think it's actually more than that right now. I'm not exactly sure the prices. But, you know, to me, what really differentiates Chicago and the rest of the world, or, or the United States and the rest of the world, is, this, is, is, is cultural factors is that we have, I think, a more intense consumption culture here than, than many parts of the world, probably not all parts of the world, but many parts of the world. And consumption not just in terms of durable goods, but in con consumption in terms of land and, and sprawl, in terms of cars and vehicle miles traveled, you know, consumption in terms of, of, of durable goods, in terms of, of TV sets, and, and all these things that we sort of comfort ourselves with in one way or the other. And so the, to shift for us to a different kind of economy, a different kind of consumption pattern, is perhaps a more fundamental uh, significant shift than in other parts of the world, where you know, the EU, which is an area I know fairly well, particularly northern Europe, where you know, it has been higher energy prices, there has been less land to go around, you've had sort of, sort of built-in constraints that we haven't had in this country to the same extent. And so the change is bigger, and the change is more profound, and we're making it a lot slower, uh, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also a matter of what we prioritize. I was, you know, between looking at Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, and Canada, and Chicago, one thing that really struck me between the two cities was the attitude there really seemed to be put people first and business will prosper. Whereas in the United States, it's put business first and people will prosper. 
And the problem is we need to find a balance between all those sort of things. And we haven't yet. We're in this process of, of redefining, I think, what affluence is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've mostly defined it in terms of economic affluence, but we're realizing that there's other parts to affluence, environmental, social issues, that we're really not an affluent you know, society until we've dealt with you know, starting with these other factors and, uh, as well as the economic. Yeah. Now you've mentioned uh, the mayor a few times, and so how do you see the role of um, strong leadership in driving some of these things forward? I, it, it, it's, it's crucial, and of course, two days ago, you know, Mayor Daly announced he's not going to run for another term, which after 21 years is huge news here in Chicago, and everyone's asking the same question, you know, what does the future hold? And there's more uncertainty and more turbulence ahead. And it's really not just a new mayor we're getting, but it's, it's a redefinition of the relationships, political relationships in, in the city that this city has really been built upon for the last 21 years. And so it's a very, it's, it's, it's a fundamental shift. And also in Chicago, the environmental and sustainability movement here has really been driven. It's been a, a somewhat unique to, to American cities where it's been a top-down movement. It's really been a strong leader making these assertions, making things happen at City Hall, creating this new kind of government where these the departments are collaborating and working on these issues much more than they ever have before. Um, so it's very, very interesting. And so what's going to happen, nobody knows, but it's, it's, we certainly have benefited from that leadership. It's, you don't have to go to City Hall and make a case for these kinds of issues. That's the great thing. But the, on the other hand, though, is I think a lot of folks on the grassroots level, have sort of, we, we sort of abdicate agency, if you will, to the mayor, to the, mm -hmm. to the city government. They'll take care of it. They'll do this. You know, they, they have our best interests in hand. We don't really have to do anything. We don't have to personally engage these issues. And again, mm -hmm. we need to find a better balance between those two things. Mm -hmm. But Chicago has certainly benefited from the mayor's leadership uh, and outspokenness, if you will, on these issues. Mm -hmm. And what the future holds is going to be really interesting. And, and this week, it, it's the it's conversation I've been having with just about everybody I, I run into. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Uh, April of 2011, uh, we'll hopefully start to get to, to know that answer a little bit and, and what's going what's gonna to basically shape Chicago in the future. Mm -hmm. That's the big issue. Mm -hmm. Final question then. One of the things the mayor does seem to have done is position Chicago at least um, as a leader in some areas and that seems to have drawn some, um, some good things to Chicago, not least for example uh, you were saying many of the wind companies uh, locate here now that there's some interesting things going on electric cars. Can you say a bit about that? Sure. I mean, you know, he really has gone out there and marketed Chicago and sort of broken out Chicago out of this sort of, you know, we're very sort of modest, humble Midwesterners and, you know, no, don't make a big fuss about things. And the mayor really went out there and said, you know what, I want Chicago to be the leader on these sustainability issues of, of any city in North America or any city in the world, depending on how bold he's feeling that particular day. And it's really, you know, it, it's, have we lived up to that? No, but has anyone lived up to that? No, but it's an, it's an aspirational goal. And I think that's what's important. And as part of the aspirational goal, it's, it's, it's drawn things to Chicago and assets to Chicago uh, and, and, and thought leaders to Chicago in a way that I don't think uh, it would have otherwise. It's, it's um, you know, in terms of green, in terms of conference, I just think the other thing that Chicago, we, we have all these conferences that come. You know, the, the big green building conference is coming in November. We're already gearing up for that. There's a tons of, of things that are happening here, and, and and things that that kind of leadership has attracted, kind of like a magnet, if you will. Mm -hmm. I think going ahead, our challenge is really to how do we live up to that aspiration? How do we continue to live up to that aspiration? And how do we start achieving that aspiration? Mm -hmm. That to me is the question. You know, going mm -hmm. ahead. Well, thank you for your time today, and good luck with that. Absolutely, thank you.